All right, all right, here we go. It is Monday, 7 18 22. Hope you had a great weekend with your family, Stu Crew. Let's freaking go. I get to see it. I'm a first hand witness, completely blown away every day by the explosion of this platform. But the glory does not belong to Stu Peters. This is God's platform. And yes. All glory be to Praise God Jesus. Almighty. Thank you, God Almighty, for this platform of daily truth, exposure, and accountability. Yes. Why is Tony Fauci still running around free? Why? Welcome back. We've spent several months on this program just scratching the surface covering the corruption and abuse within Child Protective Services, CPS, America's largest child trafficking organization. But did you know that more than half of the families that go through the child welfare system never receive any legal counsel at all? Yeah, there are parents who have their kids ripped away, their parent-child relationship legally severed permanently without ever even getting to speak to a lawyer. Dwight Mitchell is the founder and executive director of the Family Preservation Foundation. The FPF is a strategic national action network of several parental organizations present in thousands of cities and towns around America. Mitchell's group exists solely to fight against the traumatic separation of children from their parents when there's no evidence of any physical harm to the child. They do this by providing pro bono legal aid to children and families in child welfare and foster care cases. The chief goal here is to keep children away from and to get them to stay out of the foster care system. Dwight Mitchell joins us now. Mr. Mitchell, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. So this is kind of an astonishing fact that people don't even get to speak to lawyers. And we've talked about this kangaroo court type system that CPS uses. It's not even really a court with real judges. It's all just bad actors enabling this child trafficking operation. Do you agree with that? I, I do. Um, like, like most citizens, we're just ignorant of what actually happens in uh, the child protection arena. You know, we all assume, oh, CPS, oh, the parent must have done something wrong. Right. Um, but once we ran statistics and started looking at, the, you know, the court reports, because the data is actually out there and freely available to anyone, you start to see that it's systemic and that this process, which is civil in nature and not criminal, so you aren't even entitled to all of the same rights that you are. Uh, you know, a, 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 actually, a criminal has more rights than you do in a CPS case. So there's something called an emergency protective hearing. And I actually went and did the statistics uh, under the, the current guise that CPS, based upon allegations and allegations only, no proof, can come and remove your child from your home. Now, technically, you're supposed to have a hearing in three days where the county is supposed to substantiate uh, their allegations uh, to, to some form, not have all the facts, but just enough to establish a prima facie that a child may be in need of, of protection services. Well, once I uh, went to the judiciary and I said, I wanna see all of your figures because I'm, I'm a data guy, data driven guy. And uh, I'll just use Minnesota as an example. Minnesota takes about 40,000 children a, a year, and they're supposed to have, and that's just Minnesota. 40,000 in this state me. alone, in Minnesota alone, 40,000 children are taken by CPS every year? Yes, that's, that's correct. And, and it's been consistent between 37 and 40,000 every single year. So that's how many are in the system. And so when I went and I said, okay, I understand, how many of them have a, uh, have a lawyer? when uh, the child is actually removed from the home. So they do, this is rotating schedule. So they, they take, um, there's about 40,000 in the system. They take about 7,500. And out of that 7,500 each year, they, about 1,000 will actually have an attorney present when their child is taken. Now the state gives the county 60 days to show that the parent actually did something to either harm the child or put the child into neglect. When I went to uh, the court, the judiciary, and I said, okay, you know, out of the 40,000 children that had been taken and that were supposed to be seen within 60 days and the case was supposed to be adjudicated within 60 days, well, the child is supposed to return, how many actually went to trial in 60 days? The number was 357. So I said, so basically you're telling me that you have all of these children 
in custody with no proof whatsoever that the parent, parents actually did harm their child and they aren't, they aren't being processed. She said that that's true. And I said, well, why? Well, and she started saying, well, this court discretion, we're overcrowded, there's lack of judges. And it was all of these excuses. I said, well, the statute says that if you haven't established, you know, the facts in 60 days, that child is supposed to be given back to the parent. <clears throat> well, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. So what is happening to the children? The the child remains in foster care for up to 15 months. The federal statute says they can remain in foster care up to 15 months. Uh, Minnesota does it for a year. After a year, they start the termination of parental rights. So do you think that they're using this this excuse of a bogged down judiciary or a bogged down bureaucracy uh, and just inundating and overwhelming parents with this huge process, this sham of a bureaucratic process to basically just intimidate them away from ever sticking up for themselves to fight for their children? I mean, putting them basically in a hopeless or helpless position? Well, what actually happens is we, the short answer to your question is yes. They generally will go after the the poor and disenfranchised who can't afford lawyers. They will give them public defenders, but the public defenders never see the parents they'll see the parents an hour before you know they go into court so you're supposed to go to court on the, the third they'll show up and they say they don't even know what their their client looks like half the time uh, and they don't fight for them uh, we have actually uh, obtained the training material uh, for both the prosecutors and the public defenders and it is both created by the Minnesota judiciary I'm using Minnesota as an example because we're in New Jersey also uh, and when I look at the documentation for the public defenders, it's about a quarter of the size of the prosecutors. And in the public defenders, all it talks about is telling the, the public defender how to get the parents to cooperate and go along with CPS and not to actually defend the parent, you know, put in the facts, stick up for their rights. And so this is one of the reasons why I founded the organization, because I found that no one was doing anything uh, at all whatsoever. So what kind of success uh, have you found with the Family Preservation Foundation? We've actually been quite successful when we can get in early with the parents. One of the things that happens, and most parents are not aware of it, and CPS tricks people, and, it, and this is actually all across the United States. Yeah. If we can get to that parent within the first week, before they get a public defender assigned to them, we tell the parent, do not cooperate with CPS. Do not sign any forms whatsoever. What happens is that uh, there is a clause, shall we say, in the timeline. There is a CPS timeline that is supposed to take place uh, and things are supposed to happen in, you know, in 30 days, you know, three days, 30 days, 60 days, and it's supposed to be over. Well, if you sign their forms that we're going, you're going to work with CPS, you know, then CPS then has 14 months to decide what they're going to do. And what they end up doing is holding on to the children and they will use anything they can to keep getting that federal funding. So it's, it's yep. a Title IV funding that comes from the federal government. Um, the states receive about 50% of that, you know, government funding. But the trigger is that the child has to be removed at that initial court hearing, that EPC hearing that happens on the third day. And so the parents don't have lawyers. They aren't aware of what is supposed to happen. And they will start signing forms because CPS will say, sign these forms and we'll, we'll help you get your kid back. Well, they don't so, tell the parents. So you're providing this pro bono legal counsel or networking, hooking people up with the relevant resources that they need to fight this child trafficking operation, which is what it is. It's a big racket. When you abduct or kidnap a child for a profit, that's the definition of child trafficking. That's what's happening in 99% of these cases. So for the Family Preservation Foundation, you're essentially fighting against human traffickers. Uh, If you're providing that pro bono work, you have to achieve funding somehow. How is FPF achieving funding? We've we've applied for a number of grants. We still apply for grants. We we, um, rely on donations. Uh, what we're trying to do now is establish our own uh, legal aid, uh, sort of like the uh, NAACP. They have their legal action arm. 
And so what we want to do is we want to actually have our own lawyers on staff, so staff lawyers that don't have to worry about the judges or the judiciary. All they need to do is exactly what we tell them to do. We have the process and the means, and we've actually put it into action so that if we can have our own staff lawyers, and they're about $70,000 a year per lawyer, and then that the only thing this lawyer is doing is fighting child protection services. I love that. I love it. I think everything should be about fighting CPS right now until it's just completely abolished and torn down and a complete rethink has happened across this country. There are parents that just absolutely love their kids that have done absolutely nothing wrong at all whatsoever who are having this system weaponized against them either by right. estranged spouses or family people who don't like them or for political reasons if they run as a candidate somewhere. They never go to jail. They never get charged with a criminal offense. There was never any abuse that took place in the first place. Yet foster families, uh, you know, adopted families, and this system is a huge racket getting paid millions and millions and millions of countless dollars every single year across this country. So anybody that wants to fight that, I'm all about it. Uh, you're doing that, obviously, with the Family Preservation Foundation. Go check them out online. Dwight Mitchell, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you being here. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, anytime. I mean, if you really want to open your minds to this and accept the fact that this is actually happening in this country, go to FamilyPreservationFoundation.org right now and just click on the Statistics tab and take a look for yourself. This is Freedom of Information Act publicly posted online federal government data. Over the last 20 years, this government, CPS, has averaged removing a half a million kids per year from their homes. 500,000 kids per year are removed by this child trafficking organization from their parents every single year over the last 20 years. You wanna know it's bankrupting Social Security. How about this number? $29.9 billion. $29.9 billion annually goes to the states from the federal government to reward them for taking these kids. And one of the criteria is that the child must be taken in order to receive this money. Part of this 29.9 billion every year, in order to receive that money, they have to remove the kid from the families at that EPC hearing, at that emergency protective hearing, within three days of originally removing the child from the home. You wanna know what this is all about. That's what this is all about. More of the Stu Peter Show continues in 60 seconds. Go nowhere.